right, it's just about to start putting the pins, that's what I'm calling them, the two pieces, well, like dowel, is a part of the quick release feeding mechanism working on. How is it going to start feeding? The, the feed mechanism is turning. And it's just starting to lose out plastic now, I think. Now, I do have rims on these. 10 millimeter rims set in curva. Looks a little bit messy there. I don't know if I can really uh, pull on that and pull that off. Because it might pull the whole thing off. These are part of the pins. So there's two, two of these pins. This is the dowel. The reason I got these brims on because uh, they're quite narrow, they're about 7.5 millimeters, something like that. Diameter that is, and in relation to that, they're quite tall. The tallest one I think is 15 millimeters, something like that. Don't quote me on that. Seems to be leaving quite well. So there's about 50 millimetres between these two pins. Now we've asked for a speed of 25% in Kura. So that's quite slow in Kura, 25%. Now last time I printed these pins there was some artifacts between, because of like two towers, there was a bit of artifacts between the two, as if there was stringing on each edge, on the inside edges. And these pins were a little bit too big to go into the uh, skateboard bearing and the main hinge bearing, I'll show you that just now, of the quick feed mechanism I'm putting together. So I've made the diameter slightly less on these two that I'm printing out and I'm printing out a 25% speed in cover. So I'm hoping that will stop these like almost the start of a string. It feels like there's bumps on the inside edges of each of these towers I'm going to call them. Pins sticking up, pieces of dowel. Let's zoom out. Put some other lights on. I'm just going to move the camera back so I can show you what I'm putting together. This is just part of what I'm putting together. So this is a feeding belt ones, belt drive, stepper goes through here, belt up round here. Okay, and the idea is it's a, a quicker, well it's going to be a quicker release. Just hook this bolt edge into this sort of notch thing here. show you that this it does work. So you can probably see that that but basically the two dowels, there's one piece of dowel. I coated this in tipex just so I can see it a bit better because it's a bit hard to see, especially when it's closed. And that was a little bit tight to go in the skate bearing. Now you can get skate bearings with grooves in for filaments. I haven't tried that on this one. I've only got one and that's in use now. So that's one of the pins, pieces of dowel that goes in here for that skateboard bearing to press against the hot bolt inside there. Okay. 
And the other piece of dowel is, or pin as I'm calling them, is this one that goes in the top here. Now this can, has, a, has a hole in for this bolt and it has a hinge a bit, that's why I've got a circular pin there. So that basically just hooks in there and I do have another iteration of this main body that I think hopefully this will go in just that little bit deeper that sort of allen bolt here. Now you do need one of these allen bolts that has a smooth so that's quite smooth. There's only threads on about this 20 millimeters at the end here so that it can slide against this washer that I've got in there. If you have teeth on all the ball, the teeth just grip and stick on the, the washer as you're like moving it if you need to move it. Now it is possible to well, I found it possible up to now. I haven't tried this with um, the sort of grooved skate bear board bearing in here yet. But it is possible to just pull on this. That's what this is for. This is this will be fastened to your printer frame. Three holes in there, and this actually goes up this way. Bone tube going into here. What I found is that you can, if you want, pull on this lever and that will loosen this filament off if you need to move it. It might be still hard to thread like that so you might still have to unhook it all the way to be able to thread it up here. I have a cone shape here so if you're feeling your way in and can't really see it, it should help feel, feed it in. Of course you could put another board and fitting in there and make that hole like bigger and such like it. Put a board and fitting in there. So basically it's the two pieces of dowel I'm printing out now. The one with the hole in a bit longer that goes in here. and the one that goes inside this skate bearing. So that skate bearing clips into this what I'm going to call, what I am calling the push plate. Because it has two edges on the inside here. So that's just a bit of an explanation of what's going on. Okay that's okay. I mean that probably would be usable as a, a thing but as I say I've done some slight modifications on particularly this nut to go a little bit deeper there seems to be sticking up a little bit okay so that's so there's two pins I'm pinning out now let's go a bit closer Now this should take about one hour approximately to print out these two pins. They're only relatively small, they're not very big. Let's have a look. I'm not sure, I do see a very fine string between them, I'm not sure. I haven't, I think since the last print I also increased retractions. Retractions are now set at 4.5 millimeters and at 40 millimeters per second. So that's the retraction set there, 4.5 at 40 millimeters per second. This is an E3D version 6 hot end there with a 0.4 nozzle on. Now 4.5 is pushing it. Any more than five, you're asking to almost pull the hot filament from this nozzle into the cold area, which is up here. Like you see the fins, there is a fan that blows across those fins and keeps this area cold in this E3D version 6 hot end. 
so we don't want to pull the hot filament into that area because it might jam and clog up. Now I've had no problems at all feeding with 4.5 retraction at 40 millimetres per second. So it's 4.5, that's the distance, millimetres, and the speed is 40 millimetres per second for the retraction there. And I can see that it is retracting on the feeding mechanism. The feeding mechanism I'm using now is very, very similar to this, this one I showed you. Only that mine that I'm trying to put together should be a bit quicker and easier to release filament if you want to change it, etc. That's the main difference. There is, I have put a Dragon motif also on a main, well what will be the top edge of this feeding mechanism, just like for novelty for sure. Let me move the camera back and I'll show you that. Some of the lights on. So there's a dragon motif. That's the top edge. So that goes up over. The board and tube there coming out. And you do have some pressure adjustment obviously on the spring and bolt. How much pressure you want to put on this. There is a gap there but if you have a grooved bearing in there, like skateboard bearing type thing, it will close that gap up a bit I think. That's something I still have to try is with a good root skateboard bearing in there. So you've got slots in here, slot in there, that's where the stepper comes through with a 22 pinion and a belt drive to turn this wheel. As I say, I've done a bit more of an iteration of this, so now it's going to take maybe enough 28 hours to print out this main body, which I, what, what I'm calling this the main body, because in a way that's what it is, at 25%, which I might print it at, when I think I will in the next print, this was printed at 30%, this one, and that took about 18 hours. Even you know, 17, 18 hours. But the next one I'm going to print even a bit slower. So it's talking about taking even enough 28 hours to do that. So it's a long time. Very fine, I'm asking for 0 0.6, I think it is in cover. So let's go back to looking at those pins. I'll move the camera closer and zoom in. plastic there is just on the brim, the one that's sticking out there, but it did have bits of plastic on the inside of both of these when I did the last print of these two. As I say I've increased retraction and this is going quite a bit slower. Now I've asked for 10 millimeters on the brim in Kura, that does not look like 10 millimeters to me, looks more near 5 they're talking about meaning five millimeters each side. Okay let's get this onto time lapse. It's on 22 minutes throughout this print which is going to be near enough an hour print, one hour. Back to normal speed on the video for a little bit. It's on 40 minutes on the display and it's just starting to do a hole in this pin. Dowel. That 
hole is for this bolt to slide through. So that is the pin on the right here is this pin, that dowel there, that can hinge up and down to up that bolt head into that notch. Okay. So say the other the other pin there on the left is I've coded this one in Tipex just so I can see it a bit better. Is this one that goes around the skate bearing. This is just a standard skate bearing I've got. But you can get ones with grooves in. They're probably ideal for situations like this. So it's got a bit of a groove to notch the filament in. So that's just explaining. So from this angle you might just see that there's like a notch appearing in this right hand side one now. That's for the bolt, for that bolt I've just showed you. I think this is having a hard time focusing actually this camera on those pins because it head keeps getting in the way and it's focusing on them instead. We at 43 minutes. Kura estimated that this would be 54 minutes. This print, might as well call it an hour there. I'll just show you the display. So as you see, 43 minutes there. Some prints on this. 70 is the bed temperature, although it did measure neither 75 when I measured it actually, and the nozzle is at 190. So that's an E3D version 6 or 10.4 nozzle. Really start to see the hole on the right hand side for the bolt to slide in and out. And we've got 45 minutes on the LCD 128-64 display there. So three quarters of an hour. Kura said an hour, but on well, the prints have been done recently, Kuru has been inaccurate a bit, been very optimistic there, and I've had to be, have not say, add half an hour on to what Kuru has said. This pin will finish before this one because this is a shorter pin on the left. Okay, let's get this back on time lapse just now. Let this do a little bit more here. Have a look. We're back to normal speed in the video, and it's one hour two minutes on the display. Kura estimated this print to be going to be uh, 54 minutes. I mean, I don't think it's got all that long to go now, but it shows you that Kura can be a bit optimistic in its times.
So I can't see any like artifacts I'm going to call them. I mean they came off very easy on the previous two pins I did. It didn't cause me any major problems. Just like loose bits of plastic almost on the two inside edges where they face each other. That's all. And these don't have that. As I say, retraction is set to 4.5 millimeters at 40 millimeters a second on this E3D version 6 hot end. So it looks about even that hole, which it wants to be. So you can't have much more to go. show you the display And there we are, it's finished. Now I ask it to go all the way left and leave enough all the way to the top, the nozzle there. I ask the bed to come all the way forward and it to play a little tune. Now I'm going to wait about two hours I think. That's Partly to give the bed to cool down. Now it won't take two hours for the bed to cool down. It'll probably take about half an hour to cool down from 70 to ambient temperature. Display says one hour six minutes. Okay. I think the longer the prints, the more inaccurate cooler can get actually. That's not a major thing to me. So there's the two pins. That's for the skateboard bear and this one's for the board. There's a hole in there. So you might, you might be able to see the hole there. That's for the board to bed in and out. So basically now I'm just going to leave it. Two hours, partly to cool down. Now I don't know if there's some sort of chemical or physics goes on on the blue painter's tape, but on some of my prints previously, or the parts have been sticking to the tape, but then when I come to remove the part, the actual blue painter's tape is lifting as if the adhesive, adhesive sorry, isn't all that good. and. I don't know, but when I had to leave it a while, and that was quite a big print, that was my main body print, it came off quite easy. That was giving it time to cool down and giving it an hour or two after it cooled down, just leaving the print on there. So that's what I intend to do here. I intend to leave it at least two hours and then I'll come back. It's just one of my lights over on the right, one of my big lights. So this is the one with the hole in. And this is the other one. Now looking at the raft, not the raft, the brim, that looks ideal, but this one looks almost smaller. The raft on that one. Hmm. Okay, I'll come back in two hours. We'll see how easy these will be to come off. Being small, they should come off easy anyway. But we'll see in two hours.
okay it's been a little bit over two hours <laughs> well it's left the boom on there still a little bit boom on here breaks off very easily most of it anyway I want a little bit of file in that slightly rough around where the hole for the border is here it's a bit tidying up that should be alright let's try this oh yes that comes off there very easily So as I say, I can't swear that that's because I've left it two hours or so after it's cooled down. So let it cool down and then just leaving it on the bed. Just blue painters tape. Or it's just coincidence of the Z height and such like and the bed temperature or something. <laughs> 